Hello and welcome back to my channel and part 9 of my series, Living with the Tao Tao. If you're new to this series, let me get you caught up. I purchased the most hated scooter on the internet in order to find out if it really is unreliable or if it just has unreliable owners. In order to give this scooter a fair chance, I've been performing all the services outlined in the owner's manual on time and only using high quality parts and techniques. I've also created a comprehensive Google Doc that contains a trip log of every trip I've taken on this scooter, a service history which outlines every service I've performed, a fuel economy calculator, and a health report that I update on every service. I've included a link to this Google Doc in the video description in case you want to follow along at home. Well, this old girl has already broken down on me twice but I've still managed to go 2,000 kilometers, which means it's time for the 2,000 kilometer service. So let's get started. So the 2,000 kilometer service doesn't actually exist. Um, the service schedule states that I have a 300 kilometer service, 1,000 kilometer service, 4,000, 8,000, 12,000. Um, but it does say that I need to be changing my engine oil every 1,000 kilometers. It also states that I need to clean my air cleaner every 1,000 kilometers and replace if required. So we're going to get that knocked out and then we're going to start taking measurements because as you know, I'm keeping track of critical systems and components of the scooter in my health report and I do that health report every 1000 kilometers. So this is going to be health report number three and I'm really excited to see what kind of toll 2000 kilometers has taken on my little scooter. So up first is the oil change. You might have noticed my recent exhaust modification. Uh, let me just clue you in on that. And that brings me to the last part of this first video, my honest predictions. I also think that I'll have a problem with the exhaust at around 3,800 miles. I don't know if it's the construction, the way that the welds are welded, the way that the welds are welded, the way that the welds are welded, or if it has extra vibration or something, but the mufflers really seem to fall off these Chinese 50cc scooters. Guess what? It's me again. We currently are at 1856 kilometers. We just had our first exhaust failure. So uh, all the bolts are Everything is present as it should be, but the welds on the muffler have broken off. I guess when I get to work, I'll try and re-weld them, maybe? Or I'm not quite sure what I should do. Um, I don't know what I'm going to charge for that. But I just want you to see that I did everything right. All my bolts are tight everywhere. They just broke off. I'm afraid the studs might have broke off the cylinder head. Nope, nope, they're still on there. Uh, I hope I make it all the way in. I don't have like, I guess I could put a tie strap on it. Go from the heat shield to something else or, I don't know. And I've got to say, it is very hard to tighten these little nuts and whatnot with this little tool kit. You gotta get way in there, burn your hand. I guess this toolkit really isn't for making repairs. It's just give you a false sense of security. All right, so I was able to tie the muffler up with these shipping straps we got on a crate motor we had at work. And uh, that was enough to get me all the way here to an auto parts store. I'm going to throw these hose clamps on here around the blacket and uh, hopefully that's enough to get me home. Alright, so I got my hose clamps on. Seems pretty sturdy, you know. I hope that's enough to at least get me home. I am uh, definitely going to need an adult beverage when I get there. 
And as I stated before, anytime I have a breakdown of a crucial component like that, I'm going to try to replace it with a better than stock component. So I have ordered myself a performance exhaust. And I will be throwing that on when I rejet my carburetor, so stay tuned for that. Now this little gem is supposed to be an oil filter. Um, it is so porous that I don't think it can actually filter oil at all. It can only just catch big chunks of metal. Um, at which point, you know, your engine's already toast. So what's the point? And I think that's why they have you change the oil every 1,000 kilometers or every 620 miles. Because you need a way to get all those metal shavings and particles out of the engine oil. Got my can of Scooty Clean here. And now for some fresh oil. Now I've got just a little bit left here, about 300 cc's in this one liter jug. I'm gonna finish that off. And then I'll show you that I have upgraded to the big jug here because really I'm just wasting all this extra plastic getting the small one container at a time. But the price is still the same in the spreadsheet. Let's see where we're at. Oh, right on the money. And that does it for the oil change. And let's have a look at the oil. You know, it looks, it looks pretty darn good. I don't see any shimmering or anything weird. Um, that little bit of a sheen you might be seeing on top is just that brake clean I sprayed on the uh, drain plug. But I don't see a lot of shimmering uh, fragments of metal this round. So uh, that's a good sign. And with that, we'll move on to the air cleaner. All right, well, a lot of you scoot heads out in scoot tube have been talking about de-restricting my scooter. And uh, a lot of people say that there is a restriction inside the air intake after the air box that uh, maybe chokes the intake and restricts the speed that way. There's some people who talk about this little piece here, which is restricting the flow to the carburetor or even removing this, um, uh, filter, I don't want to call it a filter or a plug, I don't really know what that thing's deal is, but removing that in order to increase the power output of the engine. And let me tell you why that is not going to help my scooter. Um, so as you've seen in my previous videos, my scooter is running very, very lean. That it is running lean. Spark plug out, still lean. That this motor is running lean. And let me explain to you what that means. There's this thing called stoichiometry, which is certain particles need certain partner particles in order to uh, have a chemical reaction in a certain way. So in which case we need, say, about 14 parts of air to every part of fuel in order to have complete combustion, right? So my scooter is running lean, which means I have too much air and not enough fuel. So if I de-restrict this air box, it's actually going to allow more air to pass into my carburetor. And my carburetor doesn't care how much air goes through it, it's only gonna allow a certain amount of fuel. So no matter how much air I pass through it, it's still not gonna get any more powerful. And in fact, it may be less powerful because I'm going to have leaned the engine out even further and I'm going to have less potent combustion. Now, as I said before, those CV carburetors are pretty finicky when it comes to how the air passes in and out of them. And sometimes like a little restriction here or you know, the longer tube here actually helps them with throttle response because that main slide is pulled up just by the engine vacuum. So I am not going to de-restrict this scooter because the correct thing to do is just reach out the carburetor. Now, I know there's also a lot of videos out there on de-restricting the um, CDI of the scooter because some scooters have this like fourth wire that has some sort of pulse on it that cuts the ignition above a certain RPM and yada yada, all these things. My scooter doesn't have that. It's got a very basic CDI with only five pins 
So there's not even that sixth wire to remove. Um, there is no de-restricting this scooter, unfortunately or fortunately, however you wanna look at it. Anyway, this air filter looks fantastic. It is really clean. I'm not even gonna bother wheeling the air compressor out here. I mean, there is nothing in it. It's just a beautiful little sponge. Um, and I can actually see a fair amount of engine oil in here, which is probably oil passing up through the crankcase ventilation system um, because this thing is at such high RPMs all the time. But I'm gonna throw this back in there. Make sure I have my little tag back where I found it. And we'll get on to the measurements. All right, so I've got my scooter here in the service position. I've got my laptop set up with my health report so I can log the data quickly and efficiently. The first item of data I need to collect is the compression reading. So let me just take the spark plug out. As you can see, it's still very, very lean. I did run a tank of ethanol free fuel just to see if that was causing my lean condition as I suspected it was not. Here is a picture of the spark plug on regular 87 octane. And here is what the plug looked like after running a tank of ethanol free 90 octane. Now I will mention that the octane ratings are different in the United States than they are in Europe. I believe what you guys call 95 is what we call 91 or something like that. There's some sort of discrepancy in the numbers themselves. Um, but our premium fuel, which belongs in the, like say you had a Volkswagen R32, that only calls for 91 octane in the States, and I believe that calls for 98 in Europe. So that's just for the viewers in Europe watching this, wondering why I'm running 87 octane. But as you can tell, the ethanol free fuel did not change the reading on the spark plug. The ethanol does not make a difference in the lean mixture of the fuel. And if you think about it from a physical standpoint, my problem is I have a volumetric restriction in the main jet. The main jet is literally just not allowing enough fuel to pass into the combustion chamber. So all that aside, let's get on with the compression test. So as you learned in the 1000 mile service, I have standardized the way I take these compression tests. I am going to crank this scooter for five seconds and we'll see what she runs. All right, we're still at 160 pounds. Let's do one more just to make sure it's not a fluke. All right, 160. That's pretty good. That's exactly where I would hope it would be. All right, now moving on to the electrical system measurements. I'm going to be measuring the stator output, the charging system output, the charge coil output. Um, my setup again, I am going to use my DigiSync just as a tachometer to make sure I am taking my measurements at a consistent RPM range. And you might notice there is something missing from my regular setup and that is my old trusty multimeter. Now in lieu of my snap-on multimeter, I will be using this pocket meter. This thing is pretty cool. It's a little uh, pocket-sized multimeter that Bluetooths to your phone. And the reason I'm using this is because it's very difficult to get my multimeter and everything in the shot and show you what wires I'm probing. And with this, I can do a picture-in-picture -picture image with my phone and, you know, slick up the graphics a little for you. So, without further ado, our first measurement is going to be the stator winding on the yellow wire. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect this connector. This is the connector that goes to my stator. Of course, one side is going to go directly to the stator. The other side is going to go to the wire harness. So this, this side goes down to the stator. This side goes up into the wire harness. So this is the side I need to probe. And we have three wires, right? We have a yellow stator winding, a white stator winding, and we have this green wire. And if you know Chinese scooters or Honda wire harnesses, you know that the green wire is always ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie the pocket meter onto the yellow leg first. 
and I am going to tie negative lead of this pocket meter to the ground on the wire harness. So I am going to flip this thing over to AC voltage and we will take our first measurement. Wait for the idle to get up right around 1750 RPMs. Right about there. And it looks like we've got about I'm going to call that 13 volts. 13 volts on the yellow. Switch her over to the white wire, so I'm literally just going to move my little pin from the yellow wire over here, and I'm going to hook it in onto the white wire. And we'll light it up and see what she does. Try to get her leveled out. I'm going to say that's about 15 volts. Okay, staying on the white wire, I'm going to increase the RPMs up to 5,000 RPMs. And I'd say we've got about, I'd say we've got about 42 volts there. I'm going to switch over to the yellow pin. And it looks like we've got about 36 volts there. Alright, so the next thing we're going to measure is the charge coil output. Now this outputs AC voltage to the CDI, which ignites the ignition coil. So that's always going to be this red wire with black tracer. Of course, we're going to want to get the stator side, not the wire harness side. And I'm going to leave my pocket meter hooked into the ground side of the wire harness. So let me just connect into here and hook the meter up. And let's crank her over and see what she does. Okay, so the highest I saw that climb to was 60 volts. Um, I do notice here that it says 60 volts DC max current. I'm just going to hook up my old multimeter just to check and make sure that I haven't maxed out my little meter. I'll disconnect the pocket meter for now. And let's see what she does. So that's just out of range for the pocket meter. Kind of a bummer, but huh, I'm glad we verified. I saw again about 70 volts AC. I'm going to mark that one down as 70. All right, moving right along, we're going to check the resistance of the pickup coil now. So for this, I'm going to connect my pocket meter again to ground, and then I'm going to connect the red lead to the stator side of the pickup coil. And now I'm going to want to measure the resistance to ground. So let me go over here and hit resistance. So we have a reading of 157 ohms, which is what we measured the very first time. So, so far no degradation in the pickup coil. All right, and we are on the final leg of it. So the last part is the total charging system voltage, both at idle and at 5,000 RPMs. So I'm of course just going to tie the pocket meter directly into the battery. All right, here we go. All right, so at idle we're running about 12.33 and let me bring the RPM up to 5,000. It's about 13 volts, 13.03.
So that is very interesting. 13.03 volts is the lowest output I've had yet. The first check I had 13.8 second check I had 13.3 now I have 13.0 now of course my standing battery voltage has decreased each time um, but you know very very strange I uh, am getting about two tenths of a volt less than my standing battery voltage at idle and that's been consistent but my total output is decreasing so it might be due for a regulator rectifier sometime soon. I'll have to uh, keep an eye on that. <laughs> what do you know? And where would we be if we weren't measuring our tire tread depth? So we have about, ooh, we are just shy of 530 seconds on the rear tire. I'm gonna call that like 4.75, 30 seconds. Yeah, let's, let's uh, mix decimals and fractions here and on the front tire what do we got we've got five thirty seconds so tires are still going strong uh engine appears to be going strong 160 pounds compression that's uh that's nothing to scoff at but once again we've only gone 2,000 kilometers that is only like 1200 miles so if you think about it that way 1200 miles and i'm having a degradation in my charging system that is not that is not good but with the data all logged now i can move on to my big project tonight which is rejetting the carburetor and installing my new performance exhaust but you are going to have to wait for that video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel make sure you ring the notification bell so you don't miss any update from me or my projects and until I see you next time, I will be living with a Tao Tao.